to Lard Island. A uh, very, very short program today, uh, really following up on uh, the film we released yesterday, which was about building ancient German houses. Um, and quite rightly, somebody pulled me up on the fact that I went from having a bright, shiny, unpainted model through to something that was complete and said, how do you get it from that to that? So I said that we would have a look at exactly how we do that in terms of painting. Uh, fortunately, I literally just was on step one and a half of painting the model when that question came through, so I was able to stop. What I do, um, <clears throat> I always base my terrain using sharp sand, uh, PVA, sharp sand, and then when, once that's dried, seal it with a, a real wet mixture of probably about uh, two parts water to one part PVA. That actually then seals and encapsulates all those stones in. If you don't put that PVA on top, every time you use it, you're going to be knocking bits off. So, we've done that, so it's a really nice solid model. Then what I did was, as you can probably see from this, I spray painted it black. Um, you probably need to give it a couple of coats where you've got this um, scouring pad to, um, to make sure it soaks in. But that's with just a uh, car paint aerosol. And then after that, what I did was I used a domestic house paint. Uh, masonry paint. This is one that uh, uh, I got from just a standard DIY outlet. Let's see, you can see that uh, image there. That is a bit of chocolate, <coughs> smooth masonry paint. Um, <coughs> where you paint it on the base, that goes on very, very readily. Um, where you're putting it on the um, scouring pad, what I did there was I watered it down a bit, so just dump my brush in the water and then put it in the paint. So it just gives it that degree more uh, liquidity, viscosity, whatever the word is, so that it does soak into that uh, scan pad. Now, if I put it up there pretty close, you can see that what I haven't done is made sure to cover every square inch of it. In fact, it's a bit rough and ready, and I'm quite happy with that. Now, what we're going to do now is paint that to paint this model. Um, normally if I were painting uh, a model at this stage I'd paint all the woodwork and then paint the external detail but we're not going to do that here because we're actually going to paint this thatch with spray cans. Um, not using a very heavy uh, coverage but just a light dusting as you'll see in a minute when we take it outside. What I do in the shed, I, in the workshop I keep some uh, a range of uh, different coloured spray cans. So some of them might be Humbrol. So we've got this one here which is a light olive, uh, standard Humbrol aerosol. We've got a grass green as well uh, which you can use with that as a base then lighten it up with a bit of that over the top. Um, but I've also got some sort of odds and ends domestic paints. I and mean, this one appears to be used for um, spraying people's pots in the garden. Well, I quite why anybody would want to do that, I have no idea, but they apparently do. This is called a sage green, which is quite a nice colour because it's, um, uh, it's a soft green rather than a bright green, so it's light and soft. This one here is a craft enamel, which is a rustoleum is the make, and that's a sort of yellowy, sandy colour, which again you can use as a highlight. And this one is Halford's in the UK, that's uh, one of our sort of the standard car parts shop where you go in and get a new wing mirror or wiper blade or children's bicycle or roof box for the top of the car. They have a range of camouflage paints, which, as the name suggests, are um, matte. And this is a khaki colour. So, as you can see, we're not going for strong tones, we're going for fairly soft tones. Uh, that we can put the darker ones on and then lighten that up. And this is going to be a case of really just giving it a real jab from a distance and allowing that to mist onto the model. 
So uh, let's go outside, hope it's not raining, and uh, see how we do that. It's a very, very quick process, so don't blink. Okay, well here we are over at the Lan Island Wood Store, suitable place for me to pop this on, and we can get we can get spraying. Um, now I'm going to start off with this light olive green, and as we can see, I'm literally coming in from quite a distance here and just allowing that to dust onto the model just to give us really a hint of that colour. Where am I going to go next? I think I'll stick with the I'll stick with the greens and we'll go with that. This is the sage green. Quite enough of that. Now we'll go with the car key, the Halford's car key. And you can see why I didn't paint this stuff first because I'm getting over blow or whatever the term is. And uh, finally, we'll go in with the yellow, which is giving us a, more of a straw colour. Which kind of suggests that better days of. And that's it. Let's go back into the workshop and uh, have a better look at this. So back inside in the warm, which is where I much prefer to be, and we can look at that and see that it really is just a dusting because the next stage is what's going to really bring this to life. Um, uh, what we're going to do now is add all sorts of mosses and plants and gunk that's uh, attached itself to our thatch. Good idea to go and look at some old thatch buildings. Um, we've got a pub local to here which uh, the thatch was recently replaced on and looking at the state of that, it, you know, it isn't yellow, it's dark, it's grey, it's grotty, it's green in places. Um, so if you have an opportunity, go and have a look, just have a look on the web. What we're going to use now are some uh, Army Painter uh, washes. Now I'm going to use a brown, first of all just to do some general streaks. Um, you can uh, alter this down but uh, I'm not going to bother. So just get some general sort of streaking down the model just to indicate patches of ageing and wear. It's totally unscientific this, but obviously it gives you an opportunity if you've got any clumps of paint where it's just gone on a bit too thick to just break that up so it becomes a bit less of a big blotch. But actually, next thing we're going to do is do exactly the same thing again but using the green uh, because the green is going to give us a base for where the moss is going to go. And again, you can use this to break up any splodges of paint. But I focus largely around areas where you're going to get a build up of spores so there, and then create some streaks as that goes down. Because remember, this is going to give us a sense of depth and texture to the thatch. Do that all over, obviously, not forgetting the pig pen, which I uh, which I thatched as well. Uh, it was nicely cast in resin, but I thought to get a match, I would just cut out a bit. So I just used a pair of um, uh, cutters to hack that about a bit and then put the new lid on. And then, here we go. Now remember, we don't want to go near the, the top central bit where we made a little bit of a hole with a pair of scissors because that's going to be where the um, smoke is going to go out. We need a bit more of this than we did of the other stuff. And remember that snotty bit that we talked about yesterday? Well, that is going to get covered up here with moss. So when I said it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. So, 
And don't forget to do some down the bottom because uh, it's going to give us a nice bit of colour. Right, there we go. Um, I tend not to do anything around the edges, but if it looks particularly black where I've failed to paint on it, then it's probably an idea to dab a bit of green on there. Right, we're going to let that dry for five minutes, then we're going to get our moss and apply that, and then we'll be done. Well, as we can see, already this hasn't quite dried, but uh, for the sake of this uh, video, I'm just going to crack on and get it done. Um, as you can see, we've already got a situation where this is already starting to look a bit weather-beaten and warm. What am I going to use for moss? Well, I, the thing I found that I really, really like is this moss, um, which is, uh, as you can see, available on e eBay. Uh, scenic scatter floss moss green, hence my use of moss, um, and uh, that's good. Uh, they do a darker green, which goes with it, a light green, which actually, they call it a light green, it's actually darker. I find potentially a bit overwhelming. So the other thing I'm going to use is this stuff, which is just, I don't know, fine flock, I suppose. We're going to put this on with PVA. So I'm just going to use an ordinary brush. And here where we've got those areas, I'm just going to dab that in there and create some little lines coming down from there. Well, I've got the green, I tend to go just to the side of it. So it looks like the, the colour is bleeding out from the moss and it looks like younger spores developing. So, put that like that. Important to do this on a decent bit of uh, newspaper so you can just catch it up. I'm actually just going to use the lid of this box for the sake of speed. Um, I'm just going to check that on. Let that adhere for a, just for a moment. And then to tap it off. You can see that's attaching nicely. And we're going to work our way around. Oops, if I don't put the thing as well. The brush put a glue in the flock, but so again, I'm just going to the side of that there, and I'm going to focus around the top where you're going to have that joint between the wood and the um, thatch. Pop that on there. Use the residue of the first lot. And again, just tap that off. Repeat exactly the same process on the back. And again, any areas, see where the paint here's just got a bit too clumpy. And any, any areas where that's too thick, we can use this just to hide those. And again, this was the area where we had the snotty bit, so we'll go pretty heavy on this because we want to get that covered up. Okay, so we've done that. Best thing to do now is to let that dry, but I'm not going to because for the sake of speed. And just where we want to add a few extra bits to get a bit of variety, we can then sprinkle on this stuff. The fine stuff. And you can see there we're getting gradations of colour. 
which make it more plausible and believable. We'll do exactly the same again here. And just tap it straight off as soon as it's done. Think of this uh, second colour of moss as your highlight on your figure. So we're not replicating the whole thing, but we're just going in a few places just to grey cap that colour. So we'll go around the top of that door just to make it interesting. So there we have it. I'm sure somebody watching is going to say that is a slightly different blend of colours to what you got yesterday. Well it was because there's no, um, there's no recipe to this and uh, what I did yesterday probably wasn't what I did today in terms of choice of colours. You just pick up the spray cans and apply it uh, very gently until you think it looks right. And there we have it. Uh, that is our roofing done. Uh, through the magic of uh, modern television, we've whizzed forward slightly and got that based up as well. Uh, basically what I do with the base is I dry brush uh, the base up and then paint any details. So on here you'll see that we've painted up some of the sacks, we've got some cabbages there, we've got some potatoes there in sacks. Um, just to create that uh, um, pastoral scene. Uh, painted up and dry brushed up the uh, wattle fencing. I just need to dry brush on some black onto the roof where the smoke comes out. Just a tiny hole I snipped in there with some scissors. You don't have to go straight through, in fact in many ways you're better off not because you don't really want to see the substructure on, under that roof. But that is now the finished model which is ready to go on the table. So that hopefully will give you an opportunity to take it from where we got to yesterday through to the model that is actually going to be on the table this very evening uh, for its first game of uh, Disciplina at Virtus. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, put your comments below. Any questions, we'll try and answer them. Um, as indeed this uh, video proves we do listen to what you're saying so if you do have any questions don't hesitate to ask thanks again and we'll see you soon